Serious, therapist of Reddit, have you ever hated a client? Why? I've never met a patient whom I've hated. I have, however, met patients where our work together has been highly unpleasant. I hold no ill will toward them, but I do not look forward to seeing them. Everyone brings joy to a room. Some when they enter, others when they leave. I work in a behavioral hospital. I have worked a lot with children who were abused by their parents and who otherwise live quite crappy home lives. I can't say I've ever really hated a client, but I have absolutely hated some of my client's parents. I understood that the kids were acting the way they were because of their upbringing and while some were directly hostile at me, I've been hit multiple times before. I haven't ever hated the kid for it. Now, have I been frustrated frick yeah, better believe it. But hate? Nah. My so won't see kids because so many parents come in and say fix my kid and there to some reason the kid acts a certain way. It makes her too sad and angry. Kind of. Hate is a strong word. I've had a couple who had narcissistic behaviors and refused to see the way they were hurting everyone around them. Reminded me of my mom so that made it so much harder to try and work with them. Would not acknowledge their own mental emotional pain. Hurt others. And then complain they were lonely. I especially dislike those who think therapy entails getting an unbiased third party to tell them they are right so they can continue doing whatever it is they want to continue doing. It's really common for people to wonder worry that their therapist is judging them or dislikes them. However, it's part of our training and our professional code of ethics to practice non-judgmental positive regard. We also get ongoing supervision around challenging feelings that come up. Even private practitioners often maintain a connection to another therapist as a mentor for tough cases. Another thing to remember is that we hear a lot and that the thing that is shocking or shameful to you is likely pretty common. We are proud that you feel ready to recognize problematic patterns of behavior and maybe even make some change. All that being said, threatening your therapist with physical or sexual violence or coming to sessions armed, intoxicated, or high can get you fired from therapy. We've all had that happen at least once, and it can be really scary. Remember a therapist telling me a paranoid person pulled a gun on them in therapy. Apparently he survived by saying if you shoot me, I'll die and haunt you for the rest of your life which made her run away. Also he said one tried to stab him through his glasses and almost blinded him. Both got fired and didn't understand why. I don't think I've ever hated any of my clients, but I think I've definitely disliked working with a few. I've done quite a lot of work with sex offenders, and while I could do good work with many of them, there were some who were completely remorseless, and saw themselves as the real victims, for getting caught imprisoned. We were still able to make progress together, but it was draining and punishing work. 16,000 plus hours in the field, the absolute worst clients you can have are people that are forced to do it by someone else. It's a very weird dynamic where they will talk about certain things openly and then blatantly lie about things they think I'm going to tell their spouse partner parent a lie. As I look into their eyes and ask a question, I already know the answer to and they blatantly lied to me. It's infuriating sometimes. X. Client with substance use disorder, sitting across from me, obviously high on opiates, and I ask questions regarding triggers or cravings and they just lie that everything is alright and they feel great. I can see the pain in their eyes. I had it once. Also, Jack, you're an entitled butt. Please leave your family alone. Not really hated. Those with narcissistic personality disorder who think they can manipulate you and are clearly harming others are frustrating to work with. I work with kids now and I do hate some parents. The ones who reject their LGBTQ kids, the ones who have flat out told their kids they hate them and they never wanted them. My least favorite are the parents in a custody dispute who think they can feed lines to their kids to repeat in sessions about how awful the other parent is in order to try and obtain the case notes for the custody hearing later on. The community mental health system is under enough strain, we don't need those cases tying up our castle loads and being used as a tool in family conflict. I still like the kids in those scenarios, but it's sad to see how manipulative the parents are. Don't get me wrong. There are appropriate files where a kid is struggling with the separation. I'm talking about a few I've had where it's clear one parent is feeding a kid lines to say about their other parent to say in session. It's pretty obvious when you see it and it's frustrating. I hate parents that put their kids in the middle of that.
Wow lot of therapists mentioning NPDs here, interesting. Well I don't hate any of them, but the dude who insisted on chewing tobacco in my office really freaking grossed me out. I read lips, so I couldn't look away. I almost puked, and I wanted to scream. But therapists are not supposed to hate the clients. That was a hard one. This is probably one of the more light-hearted stories in here though, lol. I'm a behavioral health specialist, specifically working in addiction. I will be honest and say that I did have a client that I hated. Consensus in our job was that she didn't even have a problem with alcohol, but she was homeless and pregnant and knew we'd let her in. She was a bully, both towards staff and her peers. She was abusive towards her child and her care. She was rude, disrespectful, and unwilling to accept direction. She had an aggressive past and behaved in physically a physically aggressive manner, but towed the line just enough that you couldn't prove she was attempting to physically intimidate you. She left me fearing fearful for my safety every time she was in my office. Her problems with me came from race and sexuality. A co-worker outed me at work. I didn't share with my clients that I was gay. We couldn't discharge her because two of my staff were caught on camera manhandling the child in her care, and were promptly fired. Frick those staff. And my director was worried she'd pursue legal action against our company if we discharged her. However, while it is okay, and even common, to have negative feelings towards some clients, you must do what your professional ethics call of you. So, I continued to keep a straight, professional, and welcoming face with the client. I spoke with my director to talk about my feelings, and she recommended I have no one-on-one -on -one interactions with the client, and that I was not involved with her care outside of the groups I performed. And I treated her exactly as I'd treat any other client otherwise. The only real difference ended up being that I'd report her behaviors to another staff to address, instead of addressing them myself. Ultimately, we were able to discharge her when she threatened another staff member with bodily harm, while other staff were there to witness. I hope our paths do not cross again, but if they do, I'll continue to maintain the same level of professionalism. Honestly, a lot of the routine cases tend to blur together. Of course there are a handful unique situations and patients that are memorable, but even with difficult cases the majority is mostly out of sight out of mind. So no, I don't hate anyone specifically. There is a particularly difficult situation I don't mind sharing though. I've been dealing with it the past year and half or so. Not the patients themselves. The person is wonderful and a pleasure to work with. But they have someone in their life causing a lot of problems. It started off with that person calling our billing office presenting a financial concern. Nothing out of the ordinary. Happens all the time. But it quickly spiraled out of control with them attempting to get detailed clinical information. Which we are extremely protective over for obvious reasons. They started calling and pretending to be the patient. Claiming the fake name and credentials. We know our patient. It's obviously not them. This has continued to the point of them calling in multiple times a day being extremely abusive and threatening, and is still ongoing. We still get phone calls multiple times a week. I've listened to a few of the calls and actually spoken to the caller myself a few times, and even for me that person is difficult. We have had the authorities involved as well as considered ending our relationship with the patient. But since it's not the patient themselves causing the problem, we decided it's unfair to them to end the relationship. We developed special process for them and billing concerns. Although we still get phone calls, we have cut the nonsense and gained a bit of control over the situation. My so is a therapist who worked with sex offenders for years and there were a few sociopaths who made her very upset because they truly were not remorseful about what they did. She had to end their relationship and refer them elsewhere for their mandates therapy. I never hate clients. Some are very difficult to be around, but the more I get to know them, the more I realize why they're like that. Sometimes they don't know why they provoke that reaction in others and I can give them feedback to help them improve their likability. It helps me have compassion on people I meet outside of therapy. Most of the time, if you really get to know people, you realize the reasons why they're like that. Even if it's hurtful or annoying or even mean. That doesn't let them off the hook but it just gives context for everything. I got my master's degree in clinical psychology with plans to be a therapist. One of my very first clients while in training was a guy who I intensely disliked. 
I simply could not find any sympathy empathy for this guy after hearing his views on life. I realized that I was not cut out to be a therapist because I couldn't shift my thoughts to how to help him make improvements. It didn't help that my supervisor seemed uninterested in guiding me. I now work as a behavioral health advocate which is the best fit for me. I make sure the patient's rights are protected and their providers are doing their jobs. And my opinions of the patients don't affect my drive to make sure they receive appropriate treatment. So basically I am much better at ensuring someone else provides therapy than actually providing it myself. I'm so glad you recognized this and shifted to something that benefits you and others instead of just sticking it out and becoming one of those bitter therapists that aren't totally engaged with the client X. Asked my aunt, who's a licensed sex therapist and did a masters in psychology. I'm paraphrasing. I don't genuinely hate many clients, at worst they annoy me. But when you've been doing this for decades it becomes easier to deal with. One thing that gives me pet peeves is a lot of male clients have a misconception and misogynistic view of sex and sex work. The men who buy it are very rarely the stereotypical desperate gross loser who can't get a date. It's usually the men are looking for validation. Lonely because of loss of a wife or partner. Or a combination of ego. Because it gives them a sense of power. Real or imagined. So yeah, that's her only pet peeve. Everything else she's like a Teflon. Seen it all. My counselor had a PR file turn up. He'd abused his granddaughter and was blaming the granddaughter for telling her parents and ruining his life. The psych counseled him for the one session, then referred him to another and told him that he could not work with him. He never tried to work with clients he couldn't respect. He'd give it one or two sessions, then he'd tell them he wasn't equipped to help them and refer them to someone he felt would be a better fit. I think he saw it as you can't really help someone if, deep down, you don't actually want to be the one to help them. Therapists have a duty to report abuse as well. Hopefully this man was reported at some point. A therapist has to separate their feelings and judgment from a client in order for them to benefit from their service. Once one of these two factors isn't met they are no longer performing their duty. Ultimately they show you the paths it's up to you to choose which one you want to take. Trigger warning. Sexual assault and rape mentioned vaguely. Sar. Believe sexual assault survivors. It's not hate towards the patient, but their behavior really. It's hard to hate someone when you learn to conceptualize why they do things. One comes to mind. Lots of abuse and rape in her past. Learned to be extremely manipulative and Machiavellian to get her needs met and survive. Would cry wolf with sexual assault to get out of trouble in most situations. It put a lot of the sexual assault charities and women's shelters in really weird positions. She would be caught for possession or prostitution claim assault or rape, ask for the resources for shelters or NPOs, get them to pick her up and bring her there, eat a meal, then refuse to give them any details or give them details that didn't match and then call the individual she often reported on, who was suspected to be her pimp, to pick her up and take her home. She admitted to doing this as a racket in a session, called the social workers idiots. It was difficult to stay unconditional to that behavior. Psychology student here. Thing is, when a therapist cannot maintain a professional relationship with one of their clients, like hating a client or falling in love, they have the option to end the relationship. Keeping a relationship with a client professional is one of the most important aspects of ethics in psychology, and usually a therapist is forced to end things as soon as things start getting unprofessional. Yes, unfortunately, I worked with several clients with narcissistic personality disorder. They weren't in treatment to better themselves, they were in treatment to find other vulnerable people to prey on. I worked at an outpatient day program. The positive of the situation was that it gave the other clients real experience with setting boundaries and not letting others take advantage of them. I have had a handful of my kids out of literally thousands that just have no redeeming qualities. There is just nothing likable about them. They are manipulative. Not funny. Not fun. They tattletale. They hurt people every chance they get. They are sexually predatory. The list goes on. Literally everything that could possibly be wrong and nothing that is good. I don't hate them at all. I am sad for them. It's not their fault. I don't they want to be the way they are that's just how it worked out. Not to my clients as such. I am a child psychologist. But to some of their parents. Mainly those who are absolutely unaware that their actions affect the mental health of their children. 
who do not care about these children at all and those who are directly insane psychopaths. I think every therapist has had a client that took them too far, especially when they were in training. Clients with some personality disorders are deeply challenging for everyone, including therapists. But, those are the clients you learn the most from, that make you a better therapist. So in a way, you come to love them. It takes a lot for a therapist to hate you, dislike not so much. Just because they don't like you doesn't mean they aren't willing to work with you though. I'm a kid's behavioral therapist and the only time I've ever disliked a client was a teenage boy who started making sexual remarks about me. I respectfully asked for him to be given a new therapist. I wouldn't say hate, but there are definitely some way you just roll your eyes and sigh. We can give you all the tools to be successful, but it just depends on how you use those tools. Same thing with addiction. We can send you to rehab 100 times, you know everything you need to do. The only way things will change if you want to change. An analogy I tend to use is like having you fix a door. If you have a sledgehammer you are going to break the door. If I give you a screwdriver and teach you how to use it, you will fix the door. If you are a decent therapist liking or disliking a client is irrelevant. It's not a relationship like a friend or family member, it's a professional relationship where you provide a service for a fee. Some may bring up personal feelings based on your own history but that is about you, the therapist, more than it is about the client. I'm not a therapist, I'm a dementia care worker, I've never hated any of them, a very awful illness is literally ripping apart their brain and who they are, it's terrible and scary for them, if I get physically attacked, bodily fluids thrown at me, etc, it's because I've done something wrong, but that have been maybe 4, out of over 300, in 15 years, who I've thought, you are not a nice person, oddly that's what the family will then come out and tell us, you know, they were always mean, they never loved me as a child, used to hurt me etc. It's strange but despite the disease, you can just tell. Hate is a very strong word. If there is a therapist that has hate towards their client they one, have to give that client to a new therapist ASAP and two, consider if this is the right profession for them. People are generally the way they are for a reason, understanding that reason can help you to feel empathy for even the worst of folks. With that being said, some clients are more difficult to work with than others. To all the therapists in this thread, remember, our clients' stories are not entertainment for others, regardless of de-identification. Please do your best to refrain from storytelling. Every therapist that speaks of specific client content increases the potential to permanently mar the trust we build with client confidentiality. No one wants to divulge personal, often painful details and then turn around and have to question whether their therapist will show up online and share their story for all to hear. Hate? Number. Frustrated? Absolutely. I find the toughest clients are those that want to be there, but for some reason want you to do all the work, essentially making you have to pull things out of them. This is to be expected at first. No big deal. It's totally normal not to feel comfortable talking about things in the beginning, but eventually it's exhausting. Think about things before your sessions. Know what you want to talk about to a certain degree. Take notes if that would help. Even if what you want to talk about is books and movies, that's totally fine. If that's what you want to focus on that day, we can do that. But please don't make us or expect us to do all the work. We only have so many questions to ask. I'll take a BPD or NPD client over a client who never has anything to talk about any day of the week. Hands down. I work a behavioral therapist for kiddos with autism. I've never hated a client but I have despised the parents of some of the kiddos I've worked with. Many use the services my company provided as babysitting services rather than behavioral interventions. They would hardly participate, some were outright neglectful, and others were just mean. I felt bad for many of my kiddos because you can tell they are working hard and doing their best but their environments make them hard to succeed and even live with. I always say I prefer kiddos over adults any day. I know this post has been up for a while, but I want to add to the chorus of no, I've never hated a client, I know there are clients I've had who, if I knew them in another capacity, I would avoid socially, I also have clients who probably wouldn't be fond of me outside of therapy. 
I had a couple getting divorced and we spent 8 months working through mediating the division of their property. Every 3 weeks like clockwork one or the other would tantrum and blow up the mediation. After 8 months we finally had a contract but they both wanted to go home for Christmas before finalizing the mediation. Of course when they got back they were lunatics fighting over bed sheets and coffee mugs. I fired them and told them to pay a lawyer $500 HR to tantrum. Yes, I hated them both by the end. I have had clients I didn't look forward to seeing but never hated anyone. Sometimes it isn't a good fit for the therapist as much as for the client. Question for therapists. Do you get annoyed or bothered by a patient that frequently misses meetings? My anxiety gets so horrible sometimes I end up napping through the day. Usually feel so bad that I'll make the next one though. I know it's inconvenient to have a no-show and they could have used that time to help someone else. But do you dislike the patient more if it happens? No, but I do question the absence. Also, when doing private practice, I tend to charge clients for no-shows, which is usually a part of the usual cost for sessions but enough to make you think twice. Usually just the ones trying to scam the therapy process whether that's for disability or notes. My wife has had people come in for an intake session and been told that she has to write them a note saying they don't have to do jury duty, pay rent taxes late fees, be liable for the car accident they caused, etc. A lot of the people who come in with that as a goal tend to pack up and go when they don't get what they want, or learn that they're asking for things she couldn't possibly grant, more often than not. They'll tell her to go frick herself, call her racist, or threaten her too. It's not great. Hate usually requires having had a strong and or important connection with them strong emotion leading to a strong emotion. I disliked them. It was basically verbal abuse working with her. She would send me pages and pages of emails and multiple gigantic text messages a day. Sometimes she would come to session very sweet and other times would be screaming at me and accusing me of things I didn't do. I couldn't refuse to work with her and had terrible support from my workplace because it was a non-profit. My supervisor would mostly respond to my concerns with awe. She's, my client, is having a tough time. I constantly set boundaries but she would disrespect them. I was still able to be helpful to her and she felt a connection to me but I was anxious every day expecting her interactions and hated my job. I ended up leaving that job for that reason and many others to start my private practice it's been going great. Hate is a strong word. I have had clients I have disliked working with. Mostly because they were adversarial or they weren't ready to change. This oftentimes looked like perpetual self-pity or giving every reason why they aren't at fault. It usually ends with me telling them that I don't think I am the right person for them and that I will try and find them someone different to work with. I hate trying to treat patients that don't want to work on themselves. I've learned to not work harder than the patient. Without restating too much of what others have said, no I've never hated a client. Have there been some that were frustrating and got under my skin at times? Sure. But there were growing experiences that forced me to be introspective and improve. I was trained that if a client is evoking a negative reaction in me that's my responsibility as a clinician to address, figure out why, and either fix it in supervision my own therapy, or if it's an issue causing two counter-transference, refer to a different clinician. All y'all are saints and I really appreciate all the work that you do. If any of my therapists are on this thread, that goes double for you. Had the great value version of Creed from the office. God I hated his smug face. He also continuously insisted I vouch for his disability which included him being unable to work because his anger issues prohibited him from taking orders from a boss. Oh, and all the smelly ones. Thanks God for Vix. My dad is a therapist who serves as a court-appointed option here in our city, specifically with issues involving child services. He's spoken to the parents and children involved in pretty much every kind of trauma and often at the hands of the parents or under their care. He's often shared with me, generally, never anything that would be a breach of privacy. Sometimes when he's spoken with some truly vile humans but the thing I've noticed is that he always sees the human being who also is the product of some pain and trauma. He's always told me you can hate someone's actions and their choices but to hate them isn't right or helpful to you or them. Yes, I worked as a therapist and I specialized in teenagers but also worked with some adults. One lady I only saw once, 
She came in and told me about how she suffers from self-diagnosed depression, PTSD, and severe anxiety. I told her she needed that professionally diagnosed and she claimed that she didn't and that I should be able to. I decided to go ahead and diagnose her myself but I wouldn't tell her because I'm not qualified to. She claimed her PTSD came from two weeks ago when her son called her a bad mom for taking his phone away. That's just usual 10 year old behavior. She went on about how she gets sad occasionally and I seriously cannot stress how much she didn't have any mental disorders. She wanted me to diagnose her so she could use it as an excuse to act out. After about 10 minutes of her rambling about how her middle class life is unbearable because her husband cannot take her on a date every other night. Look everyone had their problems but I wasn't liking the way she was treating her mental illness as an excuse. I redirected her to her a friend in the same building whom does diagnose mental illnesses and she left and saw him. I talked to him later and she had quite literally nothing wrong with her and apparently she demanded to be diagnosed. I worked as a tech in a detox unit. 98% were great people, just with problems but 2% were mostly out to burn the world down around them. One guy I knew was not fixable and talked about how he is doing this to beat a charge. He would make staff day a living heck, just to see if we would sign his paper, and let him leave early. He had a team of girls who was head over hills in love with him. When he left the girls all signed AMA out with him. Some married. Three months later all the girls were forced into being prostitutes by him, and all but one OD. He went to jail for simple drug charges and was not charged for the deaths of the girls due to not enough evidence. The last girl came back to me and told the whole story about all the things he did to them before she died from AIDS. The dude is a pure narcissist sociopath and only seen the girls as ways to make money. I recall reading a therapist commenting on a thread a few months ago that they hate one of their anti-masking QAnon clients. The client refused to attend virtual therapy and whoever owned their office required them to still meet with clients in person if asked. So they had to fight tooth and nail to get them to wear a mask. Then the client let their nose stick out. The sessions were basically the client bitching about the deep state and sharing conspiracies. The therapist said they hated that they had to calmly listen to it week after week instead of telling them they're freaking stupid. The person wasn't even open to self-reflection or improving relationships with family friends they'd alienated with their beliefs, which is why they started attending, and the sessions felt like a waste of time to the therapist. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.